I'm going to comment on this. I think there's a little bit of grifting going on. Someone at the end of their career looking to make a little bit of money out of something which we would call bantar. However, let's get into the story, shall we? Firstly, I'd just like to say that I do not know this woman. I've never served with her before in my 20 years of the Royal Air Force. Squadron leader... Anne Rubri complained of bullying and discrimination in the Royal Air Force. Let's take this down fairly, guys. All right? I'm a fair dude. Right? I'm not taking the piss out of no one. She won case after ob ombudsman. There are three words I can't say. Promotion, submarine, and ombudsman. Those three words. Okay. After ombudsman agreed there was an overly masculine culture. Shut up. Shut up. Put words down below that you can't say either. It's not just me. God, everyone's saying bullying right now, aren't they? A senior female officer in the RAF has been awarded a payout after she was told by male colleagues to grow a pay. A high court judge has revealed the Air Force was ordered to apologise to squadron leader Anne Rubri after she complained of bullying and discrimination and derogatory insults about women. So basically, long-serving RAF officers' allegations were shrugged off by two senior male colleagues who said she was ballsy and that she should grow a pair. It's a bit odd, isn't it, to say... You can say someone's ballsy, it just means you're ballsy, you're... um. If I was, I wouldn't really, would I use that? No, I'd say it to a woman. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty ballsy thing to do. To say a woman did something in air combat, something like that, that was a bit out of the ordinary, quite aggressive. I'd say that's a pretty ballsy move. Yeah, definitely. That's all right. I wouldn't have no issue with saying that. But the growing a pair, I don't think I'd ever tell a woman to grow a pair. Then again, what is a woman nowadays, especially in the Royal Air Force? You could be all sorts of things, couldn't you? You could be what you want. So maybe you can tell her to grow a pair. Maybe that's a thing you can do now. I don't know. A subsequent Air Force investigation into the comments dismissed her complaints. Uh, concluded that the remarks can be applied to both genders equally. Well, there you go. Yeah, I think grow a pair. Okay, would I use that? Probably not. I wouldn't use that. But then these people aren't me. You know, I'm a bit old now. I'm 50. These people are quite young, probably. So she then took her case to the Armed Forces om Ombudsman. Shut up. Which scolded the RF for its handling of the issue. This, this bit's quite amusing. It found that there was an overly masculine culture in her unit, which showed a disregard for the female workforce. God forbid we may have a masculine culture in... The British military. This is ridiculous. This comes back to Mike Wigson again, doesn't it? I did that in a video before where he was trying to get 40% uh, women and 30% minorities, sorry, 20% minorities into the Royal Air Force by 2030. It's ridiculous. Anyway, there's the lady. Uh, medals, etc. I think she's got that many medals after that length of service. She was probably in some support arm, to be fair. So the watchdog, uh, yeah, the service complaints of the armed forces. Recommended the RF apologise and pay a compensation up to £2,000. That means they don't they didn't believe they're in the wrong, really. They're only paying two grand. They don't believe they're in the wrong. So now she's trying to sue the Ministry of Defence. It looks like someone here, in all fairness, is trying to get a power as they leave the service. A serving RF officer of over 30 years in her early 50s. Yeah, we know where this is going now. Currently a PSA, personal support officer. Understood to be London-based. Don't know what that means. In EAT, don't know what that means. She first submitted an official complaint. A service complaint, September 2018. It's going back a bit, isn't it now? Jeez, that's going long. Yeah. Service complaint should be mistreated, undermined, unsupported and mismanaged in the workplace. Sounds like my entire career, to be fair. The complaint included a complaint of bullying and discrimination by excluding me from the opportunity to develop professionally by not supporting or informing me of any issues and offering a way forward in time to rectify this. There has to be a lot of managing your own career and managing your own job. We have to set boundaries and limitations. I used to set my guys' direction. You're going, this guy's easier boundaries. And they get on with it. You know what I mean? I can't expect to micromanage, especially a squadron leader. You don't micromanage a squadron leader. I was a squadron leader. They should be getting on with their own jobs. You know, maybe a flying officer, something like that. You know what I mean? I, I'd probably guide a little bit. Maybe some flight attendants need a little bit of guidance also. This is a squadron leader. And, and this is pretty awful that she's coming out with us, to be fair. But let's just see. There might be a lot of truth in this. Um, by informing me, I was good enough to be an admin wing commander, but not a more broad wing commander. That's fair. The, there's an issue with broad. Basically, she's going to be a wing commander, but in her role, which is personal services, which is administration. Probably because she hasn't broadened her career path in that 30 years. I didn't do that either, by the way. I stayed in the cockpit for 30, uh, for 20 years, 20 years. I had a desk job at the end on and off whilst I was part-time, whilst I was all in, in the cockpit. But that means I wouldn't be suited to anything else in the Royal Air Force. I'd be staying in aviation entirely because I had not broadened my career. That was my responsibility as well, by the way. I could have taken broadened jobs. I decided not to broaden my career because I wanted to stay in the cockpit there. This woman seems to have stayed within personal services flight, PSF or whatever they're calling it now. And therefore, she's only good enough to be a wing commander next rank up but in administration There's a couple of wing commanders here refer to it as ballsy and said she should grow a pair i don't know what the grow a pair thing is but when you say someone's ballsy as i said it's like you know you're, you're a go-getter you know you're a thruster that's, that's a good thing that's a good thing i wouldn't know how else to say it thrusting as i said it's difficult isn't it because the air force uses ballsy so much 
Um, said she should grow a pair is a bit odd because when you say someone should grow a pair, it means you know grow a pair of balls, right? It means kind of like man up type thing. It means um, uh, it means you know you should you should level yourself up a bit, you know, take a, get a tougher skin. And of course, it doesn't seem to fit into what the complaint actually was. It's a bit strange for her to, for them to say this. So there's obviously some people now that are involved in this. So Justice Stacey, Air Commodore Harris, these are people involved in this kind of trial, I guess. And they found the term ballsy is used to describe each gender equally. And nor is it discriminated. Yeah, it's used a lot in the Air Force. Nor is it discriminated to use the phrase "grow a pair," which he concluded is also used in reference to both genders. Yeah, I probably wouldn't, but yeah, fair enough. Equally, and the terminology used by Wing Commander Bradley and Wing Commander Ward, who told this lady this, did not meet the threshold of bullying. Of course, it doesn't. Everything's not bullying. The, the service can be quite tough. This is one of the problems I think we have with the military. People don't realise when you go into the military, it's quite a tough place to be. I left after 20 years. I was pretty burnt out, and I'm a pretty solid dude, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not solid, solid, but I'm all right. Uh, both this this Wing Commander's made some poorly judged comments they're not discriminatory at this stage the squad leader received an apology and told the rf uh, told the rf would share lessons from her complaint to its diversity team but she was told that the wing commander left the service so could not be counseled however she was dissatisfied with the outcome and so appeal was appointed the appeal body dismissed her case and therefore she took it up to a higher authority it says here and they said they hadn't been given the support it's a bit kind of, if you just keep going, eventually you'll find someone that's going to listen to you. You know what I mean? The fact that no one was apparently offended by or challenged the use of this language is no excuse for its fair use. It kind of is, though. We have these colloquialisms. We have these terms that were used. They found there was an overly masculine culture in the unit, which appeared to show disregard for female workforce. Eh, all right. I don't, well, I don't think that's the case. I'm, I never saw any of it in 20 years in the military. I never saw any sexism like this or anything like that. But then maybe people said I wasn't looking, even though it was my job to look. I do not consider the spirit of the RF's ethos, core values and standards has been adhered to when the appeal body decided that the phrases or use of language were not considered to be objectively offensive, sex of gender related. The scope here doesn't understand much about the Royal Air Force, to be fair. If it did, it would understand we use those terms quite a bit. And it recommended that the MAD pay. Oh, so it came out the MAD. Fair enough. Take the money. Whatever. No one cares. There are wide lessons to be learnt. The RF must reconsider how personnel are currently refreshed on their inclusion and diversity. Equal opportunities and core values training. And then the squad leader obviously tried to sue the MAD for sex discrimination at employment. Oh, that's reaching. That's reaching far. That's a pretty ballsy thing to do. She should probably grow up here. <laughs> so in short, these are the kind of people, I guess, that are in the military right now. Just trying to grift a bit of cash, end of the career, been in for 30 years. I think this is really pushing it a little bit. It's a shame, isn't it, that you leave your career after 30 years with this kind of thing. Like trying to make a complaint against two guys that were trying to help you out. Saying you're a bit ballsy, saying that you're thrusting. That's a good thing. I would have taken that information. I'd run with it. It's a shame, really. I'm sure she's a good woman, actually. I don't know this squad neither at all. I'm sure she's a good woman. I just think maybe she's picked up on something there. And she's, she's maybe thought, I can make a bit of money out of this, which is... Which is, um, which is a shame. Which is a shame. This, these stories coming out of the service don't do it any good. You know what I mean? I know I talk about the diversity thing here, guys. Uh, I'm going to leave this tape now, but it's far from ideal. Look, if you're in the military, try and leave it better than when you found it. That's that's my top Tim tip right there, okay, guys? And I wish you all the best. Tim Davies, Fast Ship Performance.